Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in last week's sermon, we began looking at the events of the ministry of the prophet Elijah recorded in 1 Kings chapter 19. There we saw that Elijah found himself on the run for his life and felt that he was the only one left, that he was truly alone in Israel as a follower of God. But God began to redirect Elijah's focus in that moment, directing Elijah away from himself and towards God. Today, we'll see how God continues to refocus Elijah by giving him work to do and co-workers to support him, and how God also does the same for each one of us. God began to focus Elijah's attention through a gentle whisper, and so we pick up the account following that gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? God focused Elijah's attention through the gentle whisper. But his prophet would need just a bit more encouragement before he was ready to carry out the work God had for him. Once again, God gives Elijah the opportunity to speak for himself. And we see Elijah answer as he had before. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. While God had begun to refocus Elijah, Elijah shows through his response that his outlook on life is still grim. Elijah does not yet see how God expects him to go on as a prophet. But in answer to this response, repeated answer from Elijah, God does not seem to answer this complaint or question right away. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king of Israel and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. God does not start by directly answering Elijah's complaint that he is the only one left of God's prophets. Instead, God gives Elijah his prophet work to do. God makes it clear to Elijah that even if he may think that there is no point in going on, that God's side has already lost, God sees things quite differently. God knows exactly what he needs to get done. God knows the work that he has prepared for his prophet. God has also prepared work for each of us as his prophets. Jesus gave his church the Great Commission, the command to go and make disciples of all nations. This is the most important ongoing task that we have as believers. It is work that continues even in times of trial. And just like with Elijah, God can use those struggles and trials in our lives to strengthen us for his work. It's not that the trials themselves strengthen our faith. Jezebel's death threat to Elijah was in no way a proclamation of the good news of the Savior. But what these trials do is remind us of the need to turn to God for strength. That as we've seen with Elijah, we need to take the focus off of ourselves in times of trouble and focus instead on God. To focus on God as the only one who is truly able to help us. That means turning to God's word when we face struggles. 
focusing on the promises given to us there. Like refining metal in fire, when during trials we immerse ourselves in God's word, we are strengthened. We are strengthened in our faith that holds on to the promises of God found in his word. And we are also strengthened for the work of telling others the good news of our Savior from sin. And as much as God's word is all the comfort, strength, and guidance we need in times of trouble and in doing the work God has prepared for us, our God's love for us is so great that he blesses us even beyond what we need. God not only gives us the work of the gospel as direction for our lives, he also promises us that we will never be alone in this work. Elijah thought that he was alone, that he was the only one left following God and doing his work. After telling Elijah the work he has yet to do, God also calms his fear and doubt by assuring Elijah that he is very much mistaken. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. Not only is Elijah not the only one left in Israel, there are 7,000 true believers whom God has reserved. It's striking that Elijah, the most prominent prophet in Israel, failed to recognize this. Or that in his fear and despair, he had forgotten. In fact, just before the showdown on Mount Carmel, Elijah had met with Obadiah, an administrator in in Ahab's palace, who was also himself a devout believer in the true Lord. And not only was Obadiah known to Elijah as a believer, Obadiah had also told Elijah that during Jezebel's deadly persecution, he had hidden 100 prophets of the Lord in caves to protect them. Yet, for some reason, Elijah had failed to acknowledge this evidence of God's people as he slipped into self-focus and despair. That is the same trap that we can fall into when we focus only on ourselves in times of trial. That even if we might know in our minds that there are other Christians out there in the world, in our hearts, each of us thinks that we are the only one left. That we forget about the support we have from the family of believers. That we, like Elijah, begin to feel alone, isolated, or abandoned. And that is why, in those times of trial, when we are most tempted to feel alone, when we can most easily forget, we need to turn to the only one who will never leave us alone. We need to turn to God and his word. It is there that we are given the work of the Great Commission. And just as God comforted his prophet Elijah after giving him his next next tasks as prophet, God also comforts us after giving us our gospel mission. Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Yes, we have work to do. Yes, we will be doing this work in a hostile world. 
Yes, we will often face struggle in this life, but we are never alone. Our Savior has promised to be with us always, to the very end of time. He will continue to be with us through our lives and with us when we enter into eternity in our heavenly home with him. But if the promise of Christ that he is always with us were not enough, and his loving presence is truly all we ever need, he has also given us the assurance that he will always have reserved those who do not bow down to idols. The very work he has given us is to make disciples, to welcome more people as the ones reserved through faith in the promise of the forgiveness of sins that we have in Christ. Like Elijah calling Elisha, when we proclaim the gospel message, we bring new workers into God's harvest field, those who will work alongside us and continue the work after we are done. Jesus has given us the promise of eternal life through faith in him. He has also given us the promise that he will hold on to us and keep us in that faith. He is our shepherd. We are his sheep. And Jesus says about his sheep, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Our God will not allow anything to take us from him, because he is the one who makes us his. We are not Christ's sheep because of anything that we do. We do not choose to follow God on our own. God chose you to be his own. In fact, God's love for you is so great that even before, excuse me, even before you were born, he chose you to be his. Even before God created the universe, he knew that he would create faith in your heart through the proclamation of his gospel. He chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. God chose you to be his child. God wants you to be his forever. Again, this is not based on any work of ours. It is a choice that is completely grounded in God's perfect love. And because God chose you to be his child, God will keep you as his child. Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. God does not bring us to faith and then just leave us be. Jesus promised to be with us always, that nothing will snatch us out of his hand. And so God has promised that he will always reserve his faithful ones. He reserved his 7,000 in Israel during Elijah's ministry, and he reserves his faithful people still today. He has called you to faith through the gospel, the good news that Jesus is the Savior from sin for the whole world. He has justified you through that faith. The declaration that God does not count your sins against you because Christ took the punishment for them on himself. And God has glorified you. You are made holy and blameless in his sight. 
You are held tight in your Savior's hand. Your life does not end with this life on earth, but continues into our eternal life in the new heavens and the new earth, where we will share in the joy and glory of our loving God. There, we will never again feel alone, because there, we will see our God face to face forever. When you face trials and feel alone, isolated, or abandoned, remember that you are not the only one left. Remember God, the only one who promises to be with you always. Turn to his word. Find strength in his promises. And remember also the ones reserved. God will always keep his faithful people with him. God chose you to be his child and he will hold you tight in his hand so that nothing can ever take you from him. Lean on the support that God has blessed you with through your family of believers. Together, as ones reserved... (coughs) we can go out into the world and make disciples of all nations. Together, as ones reserved, we will never be alone. Together, we will live forever in the glory of our loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. We now join to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.